In this video, I'll be trying to provide the IUPAC name of some compounds. This question here says, what is the IUPAC name of each of the following compounds? So you have these compounds here. So I'll be providing the IUPAC name of each of these compounds, right? Starting from the first one there, we have CH3F. So number one there, we have CH3F. Now what's the name of this compound? Now when it comes to things like this, there are two ways of naming compounds of this nature. The first way is to name this as an alkyl halide or as a halo alkane, right? So you can name this compound in two formats. The first format is naming this compound as an alkyl, an alkyl halide. Or the second format is to name this as a halo alkane. All right. So how does this work? Let's name this as an alkyl halide. Naming this compound as an alkyl halide. Now, first things first, you have CH3 and then you have F here. To name this as an alkyl halide, you call CH3 here. That means identify the alkyl group, which in this case, CH3 is a methyl. So we have methyl. And then I have the substituent here, which is fluorine or fluoride. So as an alkyl halide, it becomes methyl, that's alkyl halide, halogen, fluoride. If I want to name this compound as a haloalkane, it becomes the halogen first and then name the remaining parts as an alkane. So as a halogen, it's called fluorine, right? So as a halogen, what I have here is fluorine, it's called fluoro, fluoro, and then I have an alkane. CH3 as an alkane, of course, this is an alkyl group, but as an alkane, we'll have it as methane because it has just one carbon atom. All right. So this compound can either be called a methyl fluoride, that's if it's considered as an alkyl halide, or fluoromethane, that is if it is considered as um, a halo alkane. So that's the answer to this. Let's see the second one, then number two. For number two, what do we have? So number two here, we have CH3 and then CH2 and then we have C triple bonded to nitrogen. So what's the name of this compound? Again, this compound is dependent on how you want to approach this, right? So for this question here, it depends also on the approach. First things first. Note that there's something called a cyanide ion, which is Cn minus, which is what you're seeing here. So what you have here is literally a cyanide ion. So the first thing is that if I consider this, this compound here to be from here as a cyanide ion, you observe that I have this one here as a substituent. And, and an alkyl group with two carbon is actually the ethyl. So the first one becomes the ethyl cyanide. So the first name here is ethyl cyanide that if you consider this as this one here an alkyl group and then the cyanide it becomes ethyl cyanide so our second tax here is this we can also call this a cyanoethane if i start with this one here right it, it's called a cyanoethane so this is this is so this can also be called a cyanoethane, right? That's this one first, cyano, and then this one here as an alkane gives you cyanoethane. All right, so these are like the two major names. You can also call this compound, there's another name for this, which is called the pro propyl nitrile. All right, so this is like the third name. So any of these names would work for this compound. Let's take the, the third one there. Question three. For question three, we are asked to name the compound CH3 into CH2 and then oxygen here, CH2 and then CH3. Now, what you have here is an ether, right? This is an ether, right? This compound is an ether. Now, when it comes to naming ethers, your rule is this. First things first, you call this part first, 
right um here's how to name this so i'm having this this part here having two carbon atoms which is an x right so i'll have an x so x now putting the oxygen here it becomes a toxic okay the next part call this last part here as an alkene now an alkene that has two carbon is ethane so it's called an ethoxy ethane that's the name of the third one let's look at the fourth one so number four there number four i have we're giving ch3 CH3 into C triple bonded to C and then CH3. So let's name this compound. Um, this is quite simple. Longest continuous carbon chain. I have one, two, three, four, four carbon. If you count from both sides, the triple bond is attached to carbon two, whether from the left hand or the right hand side. Right. That's why I do this. One, two, three, four, or one two three four whichever way the triple bond is attached to carbon two that's from here one two before the triple bond if i go upwards i'm having one two before the triple bond since i have four carbon atoms it's called a boot now since the triple bond is attached to carbon two it becomes boot two triple bond is an alkyne so it becomes boot two ion or two butyne so any of this works question number five for question number five we are giving um this ch3 into ch2 and then nh2 all right so how do we name this compound first things first identify that the um main functional group here is this one here nh2 which represents the amine right so and this nh2 here represents the amine then if i look at ch3 ch2 is a methyl group known as ethyl so what i have here is ethyl then if i add this nh2 here this is an amine it becomes ethyl amine so you call this ethyl amine or ethanamine that's another name for this Ethanamine. All right, so that's the name for this um, compound. All right, number six, next one there. Number six there. For number six, we are given a structure, a skeletal structure, something that looks like this. Um, right, something of this nature. We have an OH here. We also have an OH here. So how do we name this compound? First things first, longest continuous carbon chain. I have one, two, three, four, and five. All right. So five gives you a pent. So I'm having a pent. Okay. Next up, this is an alcohol. Now for alcohol, I should usually have a pentanol, right? For an, for an alcohol. So the idea is this: for this, it's not just a pent, but a pentan right this becomes pentan not just pent pentan observe that the oh is attached to carbon 2 and carbon 4 from here so it becomes pentan 2 comma 4 and then diol so this is pentan 2 4 diol the same numbering would work if you if you do if you number it the other way around like if you number it this way let's say 1 2 3 four and five observe that this oh here is still in carbon two and carbon four so it's called pentan two four diol or can still be called two four pentan diol right okay let's look at the next one there question seven let's look at question seven uh number seven here Right, so I have this this um, upwards here. Then we have this compound here. All right, so how do we name this this compound here? First things first, longest continuous carbon chain. I have one, I have two, I have three. 
So that means this one here becomes a substituent. A substituent with just one, one dash here is called methyl. So I have methyl here. All right, so we have this. So from this now, we can say that this is called 2-methyl. Now, you don't really say prop 1 in, right? Because there's, li there's literally no prop 2. So you can just call this 2-methyl propene as the name. The idea of saying, okay, let's indicate 1 is not necessary because prop is always 1. There's no prop 2 in. Prop 2 in does not exist. So you can just say 2-methyl propene. But if you want, you could still say 2-methyl prop 1 in. But that's not necessary, okay? All right, the next one there, question eight. Question eight there. All right, from question eight, we have this compound. Um, this, 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 and then this. All right, so, okay, I think there's one here. There's something here. Here. Okay, so how do you name this compound here? Now, if you count the number of sides, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this compound here has 5 sides. 5-sided five cyclic compound. Of course, the 5 makes it a pent, right? It's cyclic. That becomes cyclo. By cyclic, I mean it's in a ring form like this. You can see. It's enclosed. So it's called a cyclo. I can see a double bond that becomes an alkene. So you can see your double bond here, this part here, you can see your double bond, it becomes an alkene. So in essence, the name of this compound is cyclo, cyclopentene. Again, saying cyclopent one in is not necessary here because there's no additional substituent. Okay, so it's just cyclopentene. So saying cyclopent one in is not necessary. Okay, so just note that. All right, um, this is question eight. Let's take question nine. So question nine, we have a compound that looks like this. You have this, this, have this, and then you have this. All right, so how do we name this compound? Now for this compound here, the first thing to note is this. So question nine, we have this 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 and then let's see something here this all right so how do we know this compound first things first longest continuous carbon chain i would have one two and three so you have a methyl here this is methyl this one here two is also methyl so that means this is two methyl here that becomes two two the methyl or uh, both methyl are attached to carbon two as you can see here that becomes two two so two two di methyl di methyl i have three carbons that's um one two three here and three is a probe so it becomes probe this compound is single bonded that becomes propane. So I have 2,2-dimethyl propane. All right, so let's take the last question, question 10. The last question, question 10. For question 10, we have a structure that looks like this. Um, get this done. I have a structure that looks like this. All right, so we have this. So how do you name this compound? It's quite simple. First things first, we have bromine here. Bromine makes it a bromo. Bromo because of the bromine. Bromo. This compound is in a ring form, so it becomes cyclo. So bromo, cyclo. This compound has how many sides here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides makes it a hex. So hex there for six side. This compound is single bonded. That, be, that makes it um, a hexane. All right, so that's the name of this compound. 
all right so this is how you name all of the compounds that were provided all right so let me give you a task you try to give the names of these compounds so from what we've done you have let me give you some questions here all right so for this from what you've done so far try to provide the names of each of these compounds right so look at this compound here check them very well if they are correct provide the names of this compound but if they're not correct please tell us that the structure perhaps is not correct all right but if they are correct please provide the names of these compounds a b c leave your answer in the comment section and i'll tell you if you are correct all right all right so if you enjoyed this video please do well to like this video all right so hit the like icon that's a thumbs up there leave a comment for your comment provide the IUPAC name of each of these structures a b c leave it in the comment section and i'll tell you if you're correct don't forget to if you're yet to subscribe or if it's your first time please do well to subscribe to this channel for more content and then finally share this video to your friends so that they can also learn all right so i've provided complete video lessons on all the homologous series in organic chemistry all right visit www.jonahimani.com forward slash courses and check for the organic chemistry course to get started all right thank you and see you in the next class